friends, here we are. The last hurrah, the last dance, if you will. It's our last revolution of 2020, 2021 school year. And I'm Brad, the middle school pastor here at Westridge. And if you've journeyed with us this far, you've made it. If this is your very first night, man, I'm sorry you just now found us because this is the last night of the year. But regardless, I'm so glad you're here. We've got a good night planned. We're going to be finishing up our Follow Me series where Jesus has been calling his disciples to himself. And we've just been kind of breaking down where that is that he's calling us to um, and what that means. So tonight we're going to conclude that. Tonight we're going to wrap up not just that series, but we're going to wrap up the year. So we're going to have a time of doing that. We're going to have a time for worship. And I just want to do uh, just a quick shout out to all my eighth graders. Know that I love you. I'll miss you. I hope you have an amazing high school tenure over the next four years, wherever you wind up going to school, whatever that looks like for you. I hope you have an amazing ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade year. Um, know that we will miss you. And when you become a senior, if you want to be a small group leader, just know that's an option for you to come on back to middle school to lead some students once you become a senior. But um, with all that said, praying for you, we'll miss you, and we love you. So shout out to my eighth graders. Now, I just want to make sure that uh, all of you, and I think this is mostly our online crew, but whoever you are listening to this, if you are a student in one of our groups, I just want to make sure you know how amazing your small group leader is. You know, you probably already know that, but make sure they feel the love from you, the appreciation from you, because we can't do this without them. They are so, so, so important to us being able to do what we do in middle school and help students to take steps closer to Jesus. And they invest every single week uh, in you guys and they show up and they're here for, for God, but they're here for you. And so I just wanna make sure that all of us show our appreciation. So for me, Smart Group Leaders love you to death. Can't thank you enough for everything this year. And I'm sure that is echoed from the students. So uh, students make sure they feel the love hook them up with some encouragements, some nice things. Um, so yeah, now before we jump into the end of this series, want to take some time as we have all year to be able to turn our attention to God, turn our attention to Jesus, turn our attention to the one who loves us more than anyone and, uh, and just worship God together. So uh, take some time, prepare your hearts, get your, get your minds right, get your minds ready. Um, as the team leads us through some worship before we jump into the teaching tonight. So let's worship. You let me out of the desert. It brought me into his streams, river of living water. Turn my bitter into sweet. Now my burdens are lifted You took the shackles off my feet And there's no sound louder than A captive set free So let the redeemed of the Lord say so Sing of His promises It's life worth living Cause he calls me his own There's a hallelujah After sweet victory And there's no sound louder than A captive set free Oh, there's no sound louder than A captive set free So let the redeemed of the Lord say so Promises evermore. Pour out your faithfulness. Let it overflow. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. 
Lord Jesus, the cross before me, the world behind. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Oh, I choose the Jesus way. I choose the Jesus way All my life laid down For the glory of His name Oh, I choose the Jesus way Oh, I choose the Jesus way All right, great stuff. Love it. Love, 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 love it. So we, as I said earlier, are going to wrap up our Follow Me series in which Jesus has been calling disciples. He's collected them. He's called them to specific things. And then he's literally shown them uh, what he's leading them to by him going to the cross. That's what we talked about last week. And then this week is kind of the second part of that. So Jesus goes to the cross to pay for all of our sin, to pay for all of our shortcomings, to pay for all of our issues, to pay, pay, pay for all of our, um, all of our sin, every single one of us. And not just us now, us in the past, as far as other people in the past, people that we don't even know in the future, all of humanity's sins were paid for on the cross by Jesus. And no one could pay for those sins except for him. It had to be him because he is the only one who is perfect. He is the only one who is worthy of paying the price for all humanity. Um, he's the only one who could who could do that. So he goes through this just terrible ordeal, horrible thing, beaten, arrested of stuff that he's not guilty of, um, and made fun of, and then ultimately crucified, giving up his life on the cross for all of us. And if that was it, it would be it would be sad. It would be something for us to to mourn together. But it isn't the end of this story. Um, and if you have been at church at Easter before, or you've read the full gospel before, um, then you know it's not the end. And so spoilers for those of you that don't know, Jesus doesn't stay dead, which is great news. Um, and so we're going to pick up at the very end of him dying and kind of the burial and the situation that was going on there and then move on to what happens next, uh, because it doesn't stay in this place of, of Jesus being gone and dead. Um, so we're going to pick this story up in Matthew 27, the very end of Matthew 27. Okay. So 65 and 66. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. So they put a big boulder, big stone, seal it with uh, saying this is from the governor. This is like this is not to be moved. Um, and then put guards in front of it as well. So this is not a normal thing. But they did all this because... The uh, the chief priests were uh, he was worried, um, and, and the Pharisees were worried that Jesus was his body was going to be stolen by his disciples, and they were going to say that you know he had risen from the dead, and um, they were going to make up this big story and all this stuff. So this is what they did to prevent that: seal the stone and put guards in front of the tomb to persuade people to not mess with Jesus's body. Now. You skip to the next chapter, and we're going to pick them in verse 2. We're going to read through verse 6. Uh, so check this out as it pops up on the screen. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. Pause. I assume that means they just passed out. 
you know, they were motionless. They were still alive. They were like dead men, but they weren't dead men, meaning they didn't die. Um, but I'm assuming they just passed out, you know, because they were so scared. All right, verse five. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid for I know that uh, to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. So the two Marys show up to the tomb and this is, this is a, a couple days after Jesus has died. Um, and it's after the Passover, they show up and there's an angel there, guards passed out. Um, the tomb has been opened, the, the stone is moved by this angel and he's sitting there and he's like, Hey, um, listen, don't be afraid. I know why you're here. I know you're looking for Jesus. Um, they had done, they had come to like do some things to his body and, and it, it wasn't, um, they weren't coming to like steal it or anything like that. But when they get there and see an angel, the angel's like, listen, he's risen. He's not here anymore. Go ahead and come see. Like, come check it out. Inspect what I'm saying to make sure what I'm telling you is the truth. And so they check it out. Sure enough, Jesus is gone. He's been risen from the dead. And the angel tells them to go and tell his disciples. Uh, go tell the disciples that Jesus is risen and to meet him on this mountain. And so that's exactly what they do. They head off. And they actually interact with Jesus on the way. They meet Jesus on the way. And he says the same thing. Go tell my disciples to meet me on this mountain. And then this is where we pick up the very end of Matthew 28. And this is a fairly famous passage. It's called the Great Commission because it's this kind of final charge, encouragement, and mission that Jesus gives to his disciples. So just like we've been talking about, Jesus has called all these people to be his disciples. He's calling us to be his disciples as well. So this commissioning is not just for these disciples, it's also for us. And so this is what he says to them slash us um, as kind of this, this final charge, okay? It says this in verse 17 through 20. Um, when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So Jesus has fulfilled everything that he said he would do because before he died, and this is why they put guards and sealed up the tomb, before he died, he said he was going to come back to life three days later. He would be rebuilt. Three days later, he was coming back. And this is all part of why they, the Pharisees and the religious leaders of the day thought he was being um, blasphemous because they, they believed he wasn't going to do that. That That is not, he's not God. He's not the Messiah. He's not the Savior. Um, and he's a liar. And so, by him raising from the dead, he proves himself to be who he said he is this entire time. He is the Messiah. He is the Savior. He is not a liar. He is, in fact, the one who has paid for all of our sin and conquered death for us. In this, this resurrection that's happened that we just read about, this is the conquering of sin and death. This is the him taking the keys of hell, right? And giving us the opportunity now to know God forever by not only paying for our sins on the cross, but also taking up, uh, swallowing up death so that we can now live forever with God in heaven. And so the resurrection is proof of all this, it's affirmation of all this, and it makes this way for us to now know and be with God forever and, um, and so it's this Jesus, right? This resurrected Jesus, this giving us this commissioning, this mission, this encouragement to go out and make disciples, like teach people the same things I've taught you, show people the things I've shown you live out the way I've lived out in front of you, in front of others, help more people know me in Again, this isn't me. This is Jesus saying this, okay? I'm paraphrasing some of this, but the idea is he's asking all of us to go out and help others know him. And as we do this, 
We are baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. They are knowing God now. And then as we do this, he gives us this kind of final encouragement and reminder that he is with us always. And we see later he sends the Holy Spirit who is not not just with us, he's in us. So we have the Holy Spirit in us who is the spirit of truth. He's known as an advocate, a teacher, um, and he is relaying what Jesus is saying to us. He is relaying the things that Jesus lived out and taught when he was on the planet to us. And he is enabling us to be his disciples and to help make disciples. And so he's with us always to the very end of the age. So there's never a moment in which you're following Jesus when he is not with you. He's always with you. And so as we get ready to wrap up this school year, as we get ready to head off into summer break and go on vacations and go on sports camps and maybe a lot of you go into rush with us, wherever it is God takes us, remembering that he has challenged all of us and encouraged all of us and, and not even just encouraged, he's commanded all of us to go and help people know Jesus, show people Jesus, tell people about Jesus. Do all of this knowing that Jesus is with you as you do it. And so as we go, wherever we go this summer, the call is for us to make disciples. It's for us to keep following Jesus And as we follow Jesus, we call others to follow Jesus. We help other people follow Jesus. And we remember that Jesus is with us in all of that. He has not left us to just figure it out on our own. He hasn't left us to just be like, hey, good luck. I hope you guys can do it. No, no, no. He hasn't done that. He's with us. He's given us the spirit of God to be in us and with us always. And so for you, I don't know what God has for you in the future. I don't know where you're going from here. I know we'll be taking a little break for the summer. If you're in 6th or 7th grade, we would love for you to be with us from the very beginning of the school year next year as 7th and 8th graders. And then for all of you 8th graders, man, go into high school full force with everything you've got following Jesus and, um, and help lead the way, you know? Help lead people to Jesus in everything you're doing, everything you're saying, the way you love people, the way you're gracious to people, the way you're giving of yourself. The same way Jesus is giving to us, and um, and so it's kind of it's kind of with this that I want to tell you a couple things. Okay, um, number one is we're making some changes in student ministry. They're not huge, but at the same time they're pretty big, um, which sounds counterintuitive. It sounds like I just contradicted myself, um, but here's all I mean: we're going to move the nights in which we do the things we do for middle school and high school. So I want to make sure that you know this because some of you will be in high school next year. Some of you will still be in middle school. So if you're going to be in seventh or eighth grade next year, we are going to continue to do middle school ministry. We're going to start right at the beginning of August, go through the whole school year, and we're going to be able to to be at the church at the beginning of the year, um, except we won't be on Tuesday nights anymore. We're going to move from Tuesday. We're going to move to Wednesday which is where we used to do middle school. It's when we used to do middle school. And um, I'm hoping for a lot of you, that means you will be, be able to continue to be engaged and maybe even more than you were this past year. And maybe even it means some of your friends can start to come um, and be a part of what we do at Revolution uh, in middle school here at Westridge because it's on Wednesday night. I know it's been a barrier for some people because of practices and things going on with their schedules where Wednesday was just better um, and we've been having to do Tuesday. I know there's probably going to be a few of you where Wednesday maybe is harder. And I'm really sorry that is not at all our goal is to make it harder for you. We're trying to make this as accessible as possible to every middle schooler in the land um, to be able to be here. And so we hope Wednesday is that. It will still be 7 to 9 o'clock at the church Wednesday nights. Um, And so we hope you can be a part of it. And then for those of you going to high school, you eighth graders, you're going to be a freshman next year. We're moving all of our stuff we do in high school for high schoolers to Sunday night. We're going to do that Sunday nights at the church and specific times and all that info is going to go out. You'll get it. Don't worry. But just know Sunday nights will now be your night uh, for high school connecting with services and groups uh, and to be discipled there. So we would love for you guys to just be be ready and, and already already preparing yourselves to be a part of that for the fall in August because it'll be here before you know it. Um, but until then, I just wanted to pray for you. I want to pray for you in your summer break. I want to pray for you as you continue to follow Jesus um, and wherever it is he leads that you would just be 
obedient and faithful and follow him because you know wherever he leads is going to be better for you than anywhere you would lead yourself, anywhere I would lead myself. We can trust him. He is good. He is always good. And he loves you so much more than you could possibly imagine. So um, I just want to pray for you. Pray for your summer break. Pray for your conversations tonight as you talk about not only tonight, but you know, you talk about the year and what God's done in your life this year. And uh, remember that, celebrate that, be encouraged by it, and then take it forward um, as you head into your summer. So let me pray for you. And then that will be it uh, for this school year. So God, we love you. We thank you so much for all you've done this year. We thank you for who you are. We cannot thank you enough for the resurrection of Jesus, the fact that you have conquered death, the fact that you have conquered um, sin, that you have made a way for us to know God, and, uh, and not only for us, but for us to help others to know you and to follow Jesus. So help us to make disciples, um, not just this summer, but just always. Uh, but as we head into the summer, God, help us to remember that. And, and not only that, but that you're with us as we do that, that you're walking um, with us. You're not only with us, you're in us. Uh, you've given us your spirit. And, uh, and so, God, let us be encouraged. Let us always know we're never alone. Um, and, and just to continue to rest in the fact that you're with us to the very end, um, whenever and wherever that is for us, God. So uh, we love you. We can't thank you enough for how much you love us. And uh, thank you for everything you've done this year, God. And we just can't wait to experience what you got next. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Love every single one of you. Have an amazing summer. And we will see you in the fall of 2021. Bye, you guys.